Hi, my name is Fiona, and today we're going to be talking about coupling and repulsion. So a bit of an overview, in heterozygotes, linked genes can be arranged in either coupling or repulsion. It is important to know how the alleles are arranged on the chromosomes in relation to one another, because different arrangements can result in different frequencies of gametes. So first we're going to talk about coupling. The heterozygous linked genes are considered to be in coupling when both of the dominant alleles are on one homologous chromosome and both of the recessive alleles are on the other homologous chromosome. So linked genes in coupling will look something like this right here um, when viewing a homologous chromosome pair. You have big A and big B on one homologous chromosome and little a and little b on the other. The reason that there's two is because these are sister chromatids that have been duplicated and these are the different types of notations that you can use when describing linked genes that are in coupling. So now we're going to talk about repulsion. A heterozygote with linked genes in repulsion would have one dominant and one recessive allele on one chromosome and the corresponding dominant and recessive allele on the other homologous chromosome. So linked genes in repulsion would look something like this when viewing a homologous chromosome pair. You would have big A and little b on one chromosome, and little a and big b on the other homologous chromosome. And these over here are different types of notations you can use to describe linked genes and repulsion. So now we're going to move on to how you would determine whether a heterozygote with two linked genes is in coupling or repulsion. So as you know, linked genes display non-independent assortment, meaning that the observed the observed ratios of the gametes do not follow the expected ratios of Mendelian genetics. Linked genes tend to be inherited together rather than being inherited independently of one another. So we would end up seeing more gametes with parental genotypes. However, crossing over can still happen between linked genes, resulting in some but very few recombinant gametes. So by performing a test cross between a heterozygote and a homozygous recessive for two linked genes, can observe the ratios of the offspring's genotypes to determine which genotypes are the parental genotypes and which are the recombinant genotypes. Then, once we have determined the parental genotypes, we can determine whether the linked genes are in coupling or repulsion. So now let's do an example. We're going to start with a heterozygous individual with the genotype big R, little r, big Y, little y. First, we're going to determine if the genes R and Y are linked and then if the genes are linked, we will determine if they are in coupling or repulsion. So when we perform a test cross with a homozygous recessive individual, we would expect to get an equal proportion of each genotype in the progeny. This is assuming that the genes are not linked and will follow Mendel's law of independent assortment. So you can see that down here, I have a little picture of a dihybrid cross um, with a homozygous recessive individual and a heterozygous individual. However, instead of getting a frequency of 25% of each genotype, as we expected, um, in the observed frequencies that we get, we have something that is far from equal. So based off of these irregular progeny frequencies, we can assume that the genes R and Y are linked. Now it's time to determine if the linked genes R and Y are in coupling or repulsion. So first we need to single out which of these genotypes are parental and which are recombinant. So since these two have the highest frequencies, we know that they are the parental gametes. And since these two have the lowest frequencies, we know that they are the recombinant gametes. So the parental gametes would be big R, little y, and little r, big y. And we don't have to pay attention to this little r and this little y, this little r, this little y, because those are coming from the homozygous recessive individual and we are trying to figure out the order of genes on the heterozygous individual. So now that we have our parental gametes, we know that the heterozygous individual has its chromosome arranged with the big R, little y on one chromosome and the little r, big y on the other. So then we would know that the genes R and Y are in repulsion and they could, then you can write the notation like this, with the slash in between or like this, or like this.